This Ag Business Update brought to you by American Implement, indebted to the past, committed to the future. In a moment, Courtney Cowley with the Kansas City Federal Reserve. SNS Trailer Sales with two locations in Ness City, Kansas, is where everybody goes to buy or rent trailers. They feature the all new, all aluminum Mauer grain trailer with all of the electric options, the easy to load detached trailers, and a huge stock of header trailers. At the west location, you'll find bumper pulls, goosenecks, and oil field specialty trailers, along with flat and utility beds for pickups. SNS Trailer Sales in Ness City and on the web, but remember, you do have to spell out the end. The cost of everything has gone up dramatically over the last 75 years. With one exception, keeping electricity affordable. Wheatland Electric, delivering energy for life, your touchstone energy cooperative. And joining us is Courtney Cowley, who is a senior economist in the Regional Affairs Department for the Kansas City Federal Reserve. We're going to talk about this ag economy. Uh, hi, Courtney. Hi, Ken. Good to see you. Great to catch up with you again. We're going to talk about a report that just came out and the latest uh, ag update on this uh, second quarter. Uh, give us that overall kind of 3,000 foot mark of where we are with this ag economy right now. Sure. So the agricultural economy seems to be still pretty stable. What we're seeing in ag finance conditions is obviously the big story is higher interest rates. Interest rates have gone up across all types of loans, non-real estate and real estate. And alongside that, we're seeing loan volumes starting to decline. So loan volumes declined for the second consecutive quarter. So the, the recent report that we put out this week covers our national survey of terms of lending to farmers. So it's national data on new agricultural loans that are originated within the quarter. Uh, and so, so we are starting to see some pullback in loan demand. At the same time, I think, you know, the question is what's driving that? Well, we are starting to see some declines in input costs. So the cost of fuel and fertilizer have come down from uh, really historic highs that we've seen in recent years. So, so lower production costs and then also still pretty strong liquidity and cash in the ag sector. And one way that we know that too is that we're, we're still seeing farmland values increase, even despite higher interest rates. Um, it, you know, farmland values are increasing at a slower pace, yes, but are still increasing. So we think that's a sign that uh, conditions are still pretty strong in the sector. I think we've seen some a downward pressure on prices over the last month, particularly for corn. We've gotten a couple of bearish uh, WASD reports uh, here recently. And so in including this week, we saw some uh, pullback in prices for wheat and corn uh, in the markets. And so it'll be interesting to see kind of where that goes. Uh, the, the wheat crop in Kansas and Oklahoma, Oklahoma is about to wrap up harvest. But in the northern part of the state and in Kansas, pretty behind on the wheat crop. We've had really wet weather. Um, and so I know on, on my small farm here, it's been a while since I've been able to go out to the barn without rubber boots on. And so, uh, which is a very different situation than where we were last summer. So uh, weather, I think, is the weather and interest rates, I think, are the two most important factors right now for the ag economy. We're talking with Courtney Cowley from the Kansas City Federal Reserve about kind of the latest ag outlook update uh, that has been out there. We're going to take a break and continue our conversation in just a moment. Would you like to see something done about high gas prices and low unemployment? Western Place Energy in Campus, Kansas is doing something about it. They're a proud part of Growth Energy, America's ethanol supporters, and they employ 38 people and will be adding more following the expansion. Ethanol fuel not only reduces the cost of regular gasoline, it's good for the environment and keeps money right here in the United States while supporting local rural jobs. Western Plains Energy, doing something for the future. 
When you've had a best friend for over 50 years, you develop a trust. And the Scott Co-op has been a trusted rural friend since 1957. A co-op keeps money in the area, doing business for and with their members. And that helps keep their hometown thriving with keeping money in the community. Scott Co-op is not just an elevator. It's the rural way of doing business. So when you see an elevator, remember your friends at Scott Co-op. Well, let's start again. False start. My timer again. Three, two, one. And our guest is Courtney Cowley with the Kansas City Federal Reserve. She is a senior economist in the Regional Affairs Department. Uh, and Courtney, as we look at what's going on, uh, let's talk about the strength of, uh, of banks. And, you know, we saw a report out from the Economic Research Service that said, you know, the challenge for the bigger farmers isn't quite so much as what the smaller farmers are, but piece all that together of the strength of, uh, of lending opportunities for banks and just the strength they've had in going through some of maybe the challenges we've seen, uh, especially here in the Great Plains and High Plains. Yeah, I think, I think that it has been challenging um, with, you know, kind of major swings in interest rates that always creates challenges and, and with vol the volatility we've seen in markets kind of starting with the pandemic and then the war in Ukraine. And then now that's created just, you know, at the very least, a lot of uncertainty for agricultural producers and also agricultural bankers. Uh, from what we're seeing, though, agricultural banks have still been very well positioned. Um, you know, net interest margins have improved. You know, one of the things that got, uh, you know, the ag banks through the pandemic, you know, they you know did pretty well with servicing farmers, even with the Paycheck Protection Program and and generating revenues from that. Uh, I think that the the main thing, you know, the main difficulty we're seeing now is we are starting to see you know, loan demand start to fall off. Um, on the other side of bank liquidity is deposits, and I think that's also been uh, one difficulty as well. You know, with higher inflation, people are spending more money and maybe not depositing as much. So we are we have started to see some uh, weakness on the core deposit and kind of that core funding side for banks. And so that's something that we're monitoring very closely. But as of right now, uh, agricultural banks um, funding is still very strong, still very much able to lend um, to producers that need that financing. And so um not not too concerned right now but definitely monitoring it very closely well before long uh, a lot of producers will be going to their to their local banks and uh, disc or farm credit or whatever to stop to uh, talk about operating loans and uh are we gonna see interest rates higher lower about the same i mean I, I, again not to put words in your mouth but you know it seems to be kind of rolling uh up and down and deciding on um what position banks need to be because we look at where we were a year ago to where we are now. It's a bit of a reprieve, but still not what we were used to say pre pandemic. Right. And I think that, you know, anytime a question about the future path of interest rates, obviously I, I don't have any control over that, but I can direct people to what we call the dot plot. So if you just Google the FOMC dot plot, um, that gives a pretty good indication of at least a range of where FOM, FOMC participants are. And I think that they do communicate that pretty clearly, what they think might happen toward the end of the year, maybe another couple of rate um, increases, because we still, even though you know, we did get a really good CPI inflation report this week um, that did show inflation for consumers slowing. And a big part of that was on the food and energy side. Energy though, in particular, can be extremely volatile. So even though we've seen some lowering of inflation, most of that has been on the good side of the economy and we're still seeing a lot of inflationary pressure on the services side. And so I think that there's still some desire and, and uh, to, to continue to try to get inflation back to the target of an average of 2%. And um, so according to that dot plot that I mentioned, we could still see rates go a little higher, but in the longer term, uh, the dot plot would show interest rate, the expectation that interest rates could start to come back down 
um, at least by 2025 is what that shows. All right, Courtney. Well, we appreciate the update on what's going on, and we look forward to continuing this conversation as we go throughout the year. So appreciate it. Yes. Thank you so much. Courtney Kelly, who is the Senior Economist, Regional Affairs Department with the Kansas City Federal Reserve, has joined us. We'll have more coming up in just a moment. Wolfter Construction and Irrigation has been around a long time, and a lot of folks have trusted them to design, build, and service all sizes of commercial and on-farm storage for grain and equipment. Wolfter is also known for their outstanding irrigation division, where they stock a complete selection of nozzles, regulators, drops, gear drives, electrical, and structure components. Looking for an electric motor? Wolfter has a large selection in single and three phase. Next time, reach out to the pros who have decades of experience at taking care of business the right way. Wolfter Construction and Irrigation. KBUF Radio has agriculture information for you weekdays beginning at 6 with Agriculture Today and 7 to 11. It's the KBUF Morning Show where we talk with newsmakers, have weather information as well as market analysis and all kinds of agriculture information to help you make good decisions on the farm and ranch. Follow along on our social media pages and listen to any Western Kansas broadcast station online, westernkansasnews.com. I'm Ken Rogers. Thanks for watching.